Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the wing episode part two for the Skymaster F-18 Super Hornet build. Uh, we are going to get the wings done in this episode. So stay tuned and we'll get started or restart on the wings. All right, so let's just jump right into this. Uh, basically, next thing we have to do is we gotta cut the channel in the actual wing to allow access for the control rod. Now, keep in mind with these SkyMaster control rods is they don't come necessarily at the right length. I've heard people comment on that before that they, they're too long, they're too short, whatever. Um, that's pretty much normal. Uh, this one may be too short uh, for this application, which is, is fine, then we just have to use threaded rod. But uh, just keep that in mind that it's normal to have to change the size on these things. But anyway, so first thing we have to do is we've got to cut a channel in this area. As we talked about previously, we do want to keep that as tight as possible to the pivot point on the wing because we've got our cover that is going to go over everything. So, um, and we want to have a fairly straight line, but obviously our, our line here is fixed. We've got our carbon spot right there. Uh, we're in pretty much a straight line as we've planned. So anyways, I'm going to take my Dremel bit out, start cutting a bit of a, a channel here. I'm going to put my ball joint on this side, my clevis or golden clevis on this side. We'll see if that'll actually work out uh, for length first and uh, we'll go from there. All right, channel has been cut here, and as you can see, the stock rod is gonna to be too short by about, uh, probably about half an inch, right, about 12 uh, millimeters. So uh, what we'll have to do is basically take a piece of uh, 440 rod, and we're gonna substitute that in. Now, thankfully, we've got the RTL fasteners kits here because we're missing a bunch of hardware with this aircraft. So we're missing a bunch of the, uh, the two millimeter bolts that go through the surfaces here, which is fine because I don't mind putting a better quality bolt in as well too. So uh, keep that in mind. You will need some extra hardware generally if you're putting the F-18 from SkyMaster together. Uh, and speaking of RTL fasteners, if you guys didn't know, we've got a discount code with RTL fasteners. We'll put it right in the middle of the screen here, JV30. If you use that code at rtlfasteners.com, you get 30% off your orders of $25 or more. All right, so the aileron uh, is all set up here. So basically we've got our uh, linkage all set up. Uh, we ended up using a titanium rod. I had these uh, in stock here and they're just a little bit uh, longer and they're the perfect length. So that all worked out good. We still need to put the dog bone on here, but uh, we've got this set up in the radio. So we've got uh, about 15 degrees of up travel and then I've got a reduced amount for the down travel right now. But uh, we've got the ability to adjust all that as well too. So. Ideally, uh, we're going to set this up so it matches our flaps. Like that, that's actually roughly, that's probably more flaps than we need, but basically the aileron can match it like this and will still operate as an aileron. So anyways, that's the, uh, that's the setup, that's the plan. Those new dimensions I used on the carbon piece are actually a lot better. If we did use the old dimensions where that was closer to the top surface, which is the surface that we're not seeing right now, uh, this rod would have to be at a steeper angle as I mentioned previously. So I am definitely more happy with that new, uh, new dimensions that I talked about before. And then just so everybody can see it, if you're building an F-18, this is the new, new dimensions that I use. So three and a half millimeters out from the surface to the hole and seven and a half millimeters up. Uh, that worked out. I'm, I'm a lot happier with this setup 
than uh, my previous setup. So the big benefit here is our angle doesn't have to be as steep. Uh, on my previous F18, I think I used an inch and a half servo arm, which is fine, there's enough room for it, but you do need to make this cutout, I think, a little bit longer. Other thing to remember is we've got a bunch of balsa in here, so before I hook this rod up, I just soaked that balsa in CA just to stiffen everything up and protect it. So next thing we'll do is we will put the dog bone on there, again using our RTL fasteners kit with the two millimeter hardware. Uh, we'll cut these guys off. We've put Loctite on them, tightened them all up, and uh, that part of the wing is good to go. So we gotta do the matching thing to the left wing. So we'll just get that, uh, that set up and matched up. All right guys, so both wings are complete as far as all the surfaces go and everything. So we are good to go there. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is put all my servo covers on. Now, the flap and the leading edge are pretty straightforward. We basically uh, line them up, put screw holes through, and put the screws through. Um, with the aileron one, we're going to have to do a cutout. So what we do on there is basically pull the arm off, uh, get the cutout lined up, and then install it. So. Uh, there'll be a cutout in the middle of the cover plate, but ultimately we will have that guy going over everything as well too, so the cover plate hole will be hidden. Uh, this all gets sanded out as well too, so. And then that's the next thing we're gonna be working on after the cover plates are done. So essentially, uh, you've got all of these pairs, right? So you've got one, two, three, four, and it's pretty straightforward, you've got the big one starts at the root of the wing. The medium one goes the next one. We've got the big pod. And then the little guy, this one, goes on the end. So these are pretty simple to install. I just use goop on these guys. You have to clean up the, uh, the slots and everything on them. But I just use goop and uh, slide them into place, hold them down. I'll show you guys all this stuff. But, uh, you have to keep your bolts and your fasteners and everything fairly tight to allow this to slide over, but that's where cleaning this up with the Dremel is helpful as well. So we'll just go in there and clean this area up and uh, make sure we have a good fit. You basically want that to come uh, just past the, the hinge point there. So, so that part's pretty straightforward. Uh, the pod is the only tricky one. So what I do on the pod is I make a uh, balsa piece on the back that I can use tiny little screws and screw into and then usually I do one one or two more on the uh, the front part here depending on how much room we have that's the process of what's coming up but uh, next thing we are going to do as I talked about is cover plates all right guys so I'm just doing one wing at a time here the other wing is still sitting at the uh, the stage where we left off basically from the last video. So uh, just doing this wing mock up here and um, working through this. So I've, uh, I've sanded out all of the slide over covers. I don't know what they're called. They probably have a fancy name, but uh, I don't know what it is. So we'll call them slide over covers. Uh, what I did with the other cover here that covers the aileron surface, is we sanded or dremeled out the front section and uh, you had to, the, the little cutaway only came to about here. We extended that all the way to the front and uh, that's necessary to number one, even get it fitting on there. So now it fits on there nicely. We do have to cut out the little uh, indent thing there uh, because there just is not enough room for that to work with the servo. So if you wanted to do this a different way, um, I guess you could leave it back like that and have a big gap here, but uh, not really a great way to do it. Uh, we could also run the servo flipped around and have the output shaft closer. That would have been a solution as well too, but uh, we didn't. So anyways, uh, this is gonna work out just fine. So. Uh, basically what I've done here is sanded out the tip and then what I did was I took a piece of leading edge material here. This is basswood, not balsa, so it's a little bit heavier. And what I did was take that piece 
insert it in there, took my really fine Sharpie and traced around that. Used my cutoff saw and came up with, there we go, that piece right there. Now that piece sits in the leading edge or the leading side of this piece and it works very nicely. So this is gonna get glued to that servo cover and then we'll just use probably two screws, maybe something like that to hold the leading edge in. All right guys, and I think uh, I just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to fix this wing. I just uh, kind of paused for a little bit here and figured this out. So this output shaft definitely should have been on that side of the servo. I think I just, uh, arbitrarily did that because the servo wire uh, had a little cutout section there. So I uh, didn't even think about it. So the solution to this, we're gonna fix this, uh, this covering up. But uh, basically if you have that servo flipped 180 degrees, your output shaft is gonna be over here. Uh, the original stock shaft would work even better because uh, it would be the right length and uh, then you wouldn't have to uh, cut that section out of the, uh, the cover. So uh, totally my issue, my mistake. So I'm gonna flip these around and uh, probably go back to the stock uh, linkage if it will allow us to do that. So uh, I'm gonna do that and uh, I'll show you guys the, uh, the final result. So here it is. And just remember guys, these are those special moments in the video when I could just edit all of this out through the beauty and power of editing videos and not tell you any of this happened, but I like to share my, uh, my challenges with you and share my easy times with you. So I did figure out a little bit of a, not a workaround here, but just to make life easier. So if we take this servo and switch it with the other wing, um, imagine taking this servo out, putting it in the, other wing and the output shaft is now where we want it. We take this servo out, put it in this wing and the output shaft is there. So that's gonna work out awesome because then all we have to do is go into the radio and reverse the servo. So that's definitely the, the easier way to do it. And then we'll just change the output shaft. So. Uh, that is one of the other reasons to make sure that you just bundle your servo cables up like I've talked about and then uh, you've got decent access to your servo cable if you ever have to change the servo. So anyways, let's get this done. All right guys, the switch has been made and yes, this works out way better. So um, yeah, highly suggest doing it this way instead. Anyways, so that's what it looks like when we are all good. I've uh, taken my Sharpie and just outlined the front edge there and it all lines up much nicer on the back end. So this is typical with how these things get installed. So you can just see the pivot point there and you kind of have one uh, this back part of the pod going into the other, uh, the front part. So definitely going to work out a lot better. Um, good change. So what I've done here is mark the front of the pod. We've got our piece of basswood here, which we are going to high saw in place. Just like that. Something like that. So uh, I'm gonna mix up some high saw, get this part probably glued. That's how we're gonna deal with that. What I'm gonna do for this part here is I'm just going to put some tape on the inside. We're going to put some high saw on this outside, sand this down and basically paint that um, to, uh, to match. And actually this worked out okay because if you look at the stock paint job here, this particular pod is really so if you look at the stock paint job on this pod, it's actually terrible and there's a whole bunch of pits and stuff. So it looks like there was some moisture or some, uh, some grease or something. Um, anyways, yeah, there, was, there was something on here that didn't allow that paint to stick. So 
we'll chalk this up to a, uh, a positive because we needed to repaint that anyways to make it look proper. Uh, the other one is in normal shape. So anyways, we don't need to repaint that one. So guys, so our high saw is added to the pod there. Um, I high sawed this uh, little basswood leading edge uh, mounting point. So that's glued on, filled in that section a little bit with some high saw. Next thing I'm going to do here is glue on all of the covers here. So that's pretty straightforward. All I'm going to use is E6000. Now this is the exact same product as Goop. It's all the same. If you're actually looking at the Goop brand products, you'll find that there's automotive Goop, household Goop, shoe Goop, all that stuff. All of those products are identical. There's no difference with them. Yes, the color can be different, but the name on them is the only thing. Uh, it's identical materials, just branded under different products just for marketing. But uh, the E6000 is a little bit runnier, but uh, not much. So it's basically the same thing, so. All right, so all I'm gonna do in this case is put some on the base here, slide it into place. And this stuff holds really well, but the nice thing with it is if you ever want to get it off, you can generally pry these parts off or any parts that you glue on with this stuff. Um, and so, I mean, sometimes obviously in this case you may damage it, but uh, it, 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 it is removable, which is great. So anyways, that's how we're going to glue all these pieces on is just use this stuff. And uh, so once I get those glued, then we're gonna move on to the next wing. Now changing these servos out was actually really easy because of the geometry difference. I actually didn't even need to reverse the servo, it just worked out perfect. So um, that is awesome and I'm glad I figured that out at this point. All right guys, well, I figured I'll show you how I do these cover plates, mainly the little screws. Now these little screws, uh, from Skymaster are very delicate. And uh, if you try and manhandle them in or use CA on them, you will definitely strip them. So anyways, obviously I've gotten these three installed, but I use a pin vise with a very, very small drill bit and a, I think a 1 8 inch drill bit. Maybe it's smaller, I don't know. Anyways, that's the drill bits that I have. Now, if you use the, this drill bit, basically the hole ends up being too big. And if you use this, just the small one, the hole's too small and it takes too much tension to get those screws in. So you end up just breaking the head off. So anyways, uh, this is how I do it. So I started off with the bigger drill bit and we are now through the cover plate. Okay, you can see there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill in about half the screw length into the wing wood. Okay, now we're gonna pull that out, get rid of our dust. And then I take the smaller drill bit now and just finish going all the way through. So what's gonna happen once we screw this screw in is it's going to lightly go into the bigger hole and then it'll catch the threads on the smaller hole you'll see here. And then I take my countersink bit and just add a little countersink on the head or on the plate, sorry. And then now we're just going to screw this in. So I'll kind of explain this to you as I'm screwing it in. So bigger, it's still going through the big drill bit, going through the big drill bit and now we just start catching those threads from the smaller drill bit. And if I don't, if I, if the hole's a little bit tight, what I'll do is just keep working it back and forth and don't put a lot of force on this. Like just, I'm just taking the screwdriver with my fingers and just lightly tightening it. So that's how you deal with these Skymaster screws. Uh, they are very delicate. I mean, whether they're Skymaster or not, but um, yeah, just, just be careful with those guys because you can snap the heads off pretty easy. Don't use CA in there. Um, that'll contribute to snapping those heads off. And then if you ever have to get that out and you go to unthread that, the head will just snap right off.
All right guys, so I glued up all of these pieces yesterday like I showed you and they are all cured and good to go. Um, everything fits on it just beautifully. So I'll show you the motion here for the aileron. So that's up and down. Uh, not sure how much the down is yet, but uh, it's set there and it's reduced. So um, the little pod things fit absolutely beautifully. Now I could probably get away with just putting two screws in the front here. That's how well this piece fits. Um, I just put thin CA all over it so it's nice and, uh, and hard now. But um, what I'm gonna do is, the reason I've put this tape on the side here is that gives me a guide for the side of the pod. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of balsa and we're gonna glue that in place. Uh, we're gonna soak the balsa in CA, so it's gonna get nice and solid. Then we can shape that a little bit to follow the curve of the pod right there, so it doesn't require very much. And then what we need to do is grind out this area right here where that slides over top. And then we'll just put one screw there. Again, we don't need to do anything on the other side of this. That's how well this is fitting. So I'm very happy with, uh, with the way that that's all working out. Um, all of our other covers here are nice and solid. The shoe goop worked out great. So that is awesome. Uh, once we get these pods kind of figured out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into the pylon mounting. Now this is gonna be a bit of a challenge to show you the really in close, up close, in depth details, but basically on these wings, you can always see the dowel that they put in there. So you can see the paint kind of has a chip. So we've got three sets of pylons on this wing. So number one, right there. Number two, uh, that one's a little hard to see, but if you get the light, right light reflection, you can see it. And then number three, so there's one right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now the one back here is a little harder to see, but uh, when we get the, the front mounted, uh, that will make the back line up no problem. So I'll, I'll cover all the pylons with you as well too, but uh, that's the last step that we need to do on the control surfaces on the wings. Uh, I did sand down this other side, so we filled this in with high saw yesterday, got that sanded down, and remember this is the one that had all the paint blistering all over it. So basically what I did is I just started sanding this thing until um, all the loose paint stopped coming off. So the stuff in the peak here actually worked out good and that stayed on nicely. And uh, I just was testing my color match up here and the color match worked out great. Uh, you can possibly see a little bit of a difference there, but when we paint the whole pylon, uh, basically that will disappear. The other benefit to having that color match now is we can go in and we can touch up these screw heads. And when you're drilling these holes, uh, that's one of the downfalls with the Skymaster kits is um, the gel coat doesn't really stick that well and it's usually pretty shiny. So, you know, if you get any sort of impact or anything, uh, the paint just chips off. But it's the nature of what it is. So anyways, that's where the wings are at. Sorry, that's a little bit long-winded, but uh, that's what we're doing with the, uh, the pods there. All right, so our pod is all mounted there. Used one screw on the side like I talked about and two on the back here. These came from my RTL fasteners kit. Uh, awesome, awesome screws. So next thing we're dealing with is the pylons. So this is the setup. We've got four missile rails. Now these missile rails too go onto the wing tips, okay? Now my terminology here may be incorrect and that's okay. Um, these two rails screw on to the outboard pylons, okay? And then your missiles just keyhole in there. So that's how those work. So you've got, on the Hornet, you've got four of these larger size, and you'll notice that they're different here with the mounting. So the, the, the drop tanks use this type of system, and the missiles use the keyhole. So basically at the wing root, 
Starting from the wing root, we've got a drop tank pylon, which is gonna go like that. We've got one of the second large pylons, which is gonna go like that. And then we've got one of the small pylons, which is gonna go something like that. And we've got two missile rails. One is going on that pylon, that last one. And then we've got a missile rail going on there. So the only thing with this whole setup that is not clear is the wing tip because it's not pre-drilled. Uh, you can't see the hard points or anything in the wing. So I basically will get this lined up with the bottom edge of the wing because the bottom edge is flat and it'll stick up a little bit on the top side and then we'll get the back end kind of lined up. So that's really the only kind of uh, one you have to fiddle around with. The other ones are pretty straightforward and I'll show you my process here for mounting these guys up. So the first step on these pylons is I will take my Sharpie and I will mark the center of the hard mount like that. So that is the first step for me. So we've got one Sharpie dot, two Sharpie dots. And then what I do is try and show you guys this. So if you look through, oh, there we go. So you can see through the hole, okay? And that's where obviously where the screw is gonna go through. So what I'll do here is I will take my flashlight and basically put this back one over top of the Sharpie mark. And then I will do the front one, do the same thing. And basically just double check how that all works out. So what I'm looking for when I do this is with these holes lined up over my two Sharpie marks, do they actually line up? So I've got my Sharpie marks in the center of the hard points and I wanna make sure that those holes, that those pre-drilled holes in the pylons line up over those Sharpie marks. So that's the process that I use for mounting the pylons. Uh, once I'm happy with that mark, um, if, I, uh, and if it's not right, I just need to adjust it a little bit, right? So if I've got a little bit of room on both of them, I might bring one towards the center of the wing, the other one towards the center of the ring, wing a couple millimeters, whatever needs to happen. And uh, basically you're trying to get that screw as close to the center of the, the dowel that's mounted in the wing as possible. Now, you do really need to be able to see where these are. And if you can't see where they are, like on this one, close to the wing tip, I can see this hard point right here, but I can't see the one back here. Now you can find it sometimes. I think it's right there. But uh, basically what I'll do in this case is I will get the front one marked and mounted. I will get the back one roughly marked based on having the pylon here and we'll double check and see and make sure we have a hard point there obviously. So that's the process for mounting these pylons. Fairly straightforward. I'm gonna get these guys started and I'll show you guys the progress. All right guys, so I'm just gonna show you how I mount this first pylon here and you'll see how, uh, how we work things out and uh, get everything done. So what I'm doing is I've drilled my holes, I've checked the, the spacing as I talked about previously and I'm just threading this screw in now. And what we're doing is we're cutting threads in that wooden dowel. And now what we'll do is we'll take some thin CA, put a few drops in the hole until it's full. And 
So that'll soak into the wood now. Just switching the screwdrivers because the other one was not so good. Okay, so that is, uh, is done. Now before we put this guy on, we're gonna mark the pylons. Uh, we don't necessarily need to mark the, uh, the wing because obviously that only goes in one spot. So this of course is the drop tank one that we've talked about already. And we'll just mark this, uh, this is the right wing. So we're gonna go right, inner. And then now, if we drop our screw through there, we basically want to get the screw started coming through like that. We'll do the other side here. Okay, so we've got the screws just poking out of the pylon. And now what we can do is get this guy lined up, which is right there. And we'll screw this down. Great time in the video right now to thank all of you guys that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, it's coming along nicely. We're doing some of the finishing touches right now, waiting for garage doors still, which is going to be another five, six months, maybe something like that. But uh, thank you guys for the donations. It's very much appreciated whether you made a big donation or small donation. It, uh, they all help. So Okay, so that is the pylons. Now these pylons are not going to be, when you get them mounted, they're not going to be like you know, you can make an impact on them and they're not gonna come off. That's definitely not uh, not the case. They're always gonna have a little bit of wiggle. Uh, don't worry about that. That's um, just the way they are. They're nice and solid and uh, it'll be just fine. So we're gonna uh, install the rest of them and uh, we'll show you guys the final result. All right, so a little ordinance tip time for you guys. When you are mounting the ordnance package, uh, the easiest thing to do is to drop a little bit of CA in the hole, screw the screw in, flip your ordnance around and just test fit the front. Put your back screw in, test fit the back. Okay, and you want to get that fairly snug or you can slide it in but there's not a lot of play or a zero play up and down. And that's the first part of the tip time, okay? The second part of the tip time is mark your ordinance. Okay, so we, this one is, we'll call this right, right outer. Just like that. So the reason for that is because these pylons and, and rails and everything are all a little bit different, you know, you may take this one, put it on this one, and it fits loose all of a sudden, right? So um, I'll do that with my ordinance just to make sure that it goes back in the same spot. We'll call this one right mid. Okay, just like that. So when the owner's putting this together, it's fairly simple. I mean, we'll just try this and see what happens. So this one actually doesn't even go together in the holes properly. So these holes actually don't even line up. So in this case, uh, that one basically is dedicated for the right middle. <laughs> so anyways, little, uh, little tip time for you there and uh, makes for mounting the ordnance in the future fairly simple. Um, the drop tanks here, the way they work is you slip the drop, drop tank in those two tabs and the screw just goes right through the tab that goes through the pylon. So quite simple mounting on the drop tanks. Uh, it's helpful to have this, uh, this missile off and then you can just stick a screwdriver right in there. So, uh, but that is basically the underside of the right wing. Now we're gonna mount the missile rail on the right wing. All right guys, and there is the mean bad mamma jamma wing. That looks awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so, 
So a couple notes here for you for the wingtip rail. Um, I initially lined up the back of the rail with the back of the surface. There was hard point or wood blocking in the screw hole back here, but the one in the front, uh, there was nothing. So what I did is I drilled a couple really small holes in the end of the wing with the pylon off and or the, the rail off and found that if I moved it forward, there was a hard point here. And if I move that hole forward, there is a hard point there. So I move my holes forward about half an inch, uh, about 12 centimeter or 12 millimeters. And uh, there she is. So she's all mounted and looks really good. So that wing's done. Um, other than just the small touch-ups, uh, that we have to do on the screw heads and stuff. Now, not overly happy with Skymaster here just because they touched up uh, obviously some marks and on the drop tanks here and they didn't even use the proper gray. Um, now my color match is a little bit off, but I'll, uh, I'll touch these areas up as well too while I'm here. But uh, you think that they would have the proper paint beside them, but I guess not. That's a lot to ask. So anyways, that one is done. Now moving on to the other wing. So this is the other cover. Um, I have sanded this, I have painted it, I have uh, sanded it with 2000 grit and put uh, some flat clear on it. So now we are all fixed and the splotchy paint uh, is all fixed as well too. So now what we can do is we can get that mounted on the wing, get all the pylons and everything done on this wing as well too. Same thing we did on that other wing. All right guys, and that is the F-18 wings. Of course, this is video number two in the, uh, the wing portion of this build. If you have not seen number one, um, I don't know what happened. But uh, basically the wings are done. As I've talked about, this is definitely the biggest portion of the build, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot going on on these wings and there's a lot to do. So uh, hopefully if you're building one of these, this helps you out. Um, so we are going to leave the ordnance on for probably the rest of the assembly. But uh, when we ship this aircraft, we're going to pull the ordnance off the wings, obviously. And we're probably going to pull the pylons off as well, too, just because... Uh, you know, uh, we may be able to fit it in the crate and not have any pressure on it, but it's going to be a lot easier to ship these wings without the pylons attached. Uh, everything will be marked, of course, and easy to install. So, uh, but that's it. If you have any questions about the wings, if you think I missed something, make sure you reach out to me and ask, um, either in the comments section down below, or you can send me an email, thelightersideofrc at gmail.com. Uh, don't forget, guys, to give the video a thumbs up. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, it's free to do so and uh, it helps the channel. So. so that's it. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. I don't think the next video will be F-18 related. Um, we'll see. We've got some fun things coming. So anyways, guys, thank you and we'll see you next time.